How do you spell your first name? My name is Cassandra, C A S S A N for Nancy, D R I T Z. And the last name, Blanc, B L N C. In this video, we're going to watch the questioning of a man who is trying to hide the fact that he murdered and dismembered his wife. On June 4th, 2018, Cassandra Blanc got his wife, Martine Bernard, for supposedly disrespecting him. She was six months pregnant at the time. Five days later, while her body was still in their apartment, Blanc went to the home of his in-laws. His mother-in-law was in the shower, and for reasons he has never made clear, Blanc shot his father-in-law, Roosevelt Bernard, in the childhood bedroom of Martine. He then locked the door and told his mother-in-law that Roosevelt had stepped out to talk to a Hispanic man. Blanc waited until the house was empty and then placed the body in a trash can and took it to an empty field where he set it on fire. Blanc continued to use his wife's phone to send himself texts for several days to make it seem like she was still alive. And he went to the police station as requested to answer questions about Roosevelt's disappearance where he claimed his wife refused to speak to them. Suspicious, they began to monitor Blanc and discovered him taking garbage bags with his wife's dismembered body from the apartment. Later, security footage also revealed Blanc leaving the home of Roosevelt Bernard with the body. What's your birthday? October 4th, 1995. Haitian? How do you know? Uh, accent. I still have it? Barely. Oh. Barely. Haitian, yes, sir. I was sometimes I get Jamaican and Haitian confused. I know they're completely different, but yeah. um, but I thought I could. What's your um, your address? Five, five. Uh, How tall are you? I believe five ten. Five ten, I believe. Okay, weight. Um, I haven't checked that about a long time. Two ten. Brown. Social. Social. Do you have a social security number? Yes. Why, that? why would you need the social? It's just part of the part of the initial information. It's all of it. I choose not to disclose okay. that. Yes, sir. You can understand why. No, I, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, what about work? Delphi. D e l p h i. Absolutely. And where are they? Fort Lauderdale. What kind of work do you do? Um, customer service. Um, I assist um, individuals that um, have substance abuse, okay. like marijuana, alcohol. Um, you know, just substance abuse. Is that a like a halfway house or a recovery program or? It's it's a um, it's not a treatment center. It's actually um, a call center based uh, where we set these patients up with treatment. Mm -hmm. um, so we take the um, initial assessment um, just to determine where they stand at this point. Um, and then at that point, they tell us if they want to proceed. Um, if they don't, we try to get them to, you know, it's for your own good. Okay. That's why we want you to do that. How long have you been there? I actually just started. Okay. Yes. In the past six months? No. I mean, have you been there more than six months? No. Blanc gives his personal details and describes his current job. It requires a great deal of compassion, which is at odds with the crime he has committed. Do you want to hear what I have to say? Do you want to hear yes. what's yes, going yes. on here? Okay. Um, how far do you go in school? How far did I go in school? Right. High school. Okay. You read and write English okay? English, English is your second language? Um, How fluent are you in, it's not called Haitian, what's it called? Pat? Creole. Creole. How fluent are you in Creole? I can barely okay. speak it, but... So English is your primary language? At this point, yes. Okay. Where did you go to school? Christopher Columbus High School. Where's that? Miami. How long have you been in country? Um... Were you born here or were you born in Haiti? Um, well, how long have well, I choose not to answer that question. Okay. Yes. Again, any any question that I ask you that you don't want to answer, just tell me that. Of course. Um, this is not, as I said, this is uh, this is just the only thing I want from you. And, and let me make make this straight from the from the start as well. 
I'm not going to play games with you. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to try to trick you into anything. Within the next few minutes, uh, you're going to find out where I'm coming from, but quite honestly, you already know it. And it's, it's your choice whether you decide to be honest with me. The only thing that I would ask is, is to not lie to me. Okay. Um, and we'll figure out. I mean, there, there's a reason for everything. Things happen for a reason. Um, even though I've been at this for quite a while, sometimes I don't know those reasons. So this is just kind of a, a little bit of us trying to get to the bottom of this and sort out. And Absolutely. I don't want to make you into a bad guy. I don't know Absolutely. anything about you. I've never met you before. Mm -hmm. um, have you been drinking this morning? Have I been drinking this right. morning? Um, well, I had just a, a little shot of it. Not this morning, but... Look, last night? Yeah. You seem pretty straight. That's what I mean. You're... I, I'm not drunk. Okay. I'm I'm not under the influence at all. Right. You can test me. I'm no, no. You you see, I just. Yeah. Um, um. I I only drunk recreationally. Okay. Um. Reason being is because if you can understand where I'm coming from, and it's I I I I was extremely emotional about this because I. I took it upon myself to ask my wife, hey, listen, you know, would you like to go see, well, first of all, she didn't want to go to the baby shower. There was a baby, um, baby shower that was arranged. She didn't want to go. When was this? Um, a few days, like, what's today, my, uh, Tuesday. This was supposed to be on a Saturday. Okay. So, I went to, I, I asked her if she wants to go to uh, visit her, her parents, um, and she chose not to. Um, you know, she she just chose not to. And this was last weekend. This was this Saturday. Okay, like three um, days. So ago. long story. Yeah. So long story short, um, I was informed that and, um, detectives wanted to speak with me to you know get an understanding of what's going on, and I was extremely compliant. I, you know, I I wanted to help. Now when um, was that? Yesterday. Okay. Um, and I felt I felt as though you know the conversation started well. We were talking, you know. You asked me questions, I answered. Conversation was going well, and then at that point, at at, at a certain point, I felt as though I was being accused um, because the way they were explaining, the way the way they were at um, speaking to me, it was as if the perspective I got was as if you're accusing me of being responsible for that. And I was extremely upset about that, and I didn't appreciate it. So, you know, I just had started driving, you know, just to clear my mind. No speeding, obviously. Right. Just driving, calm my mind. And this was yesterday? Yes, sir. Okay. Yesterday being Monday? Yes, sir. So, I just, you know, took a little shot and just fell asleep. Okay. And that's pretty much it. How long have you and your wife been married? Since October. October of, like just recently, within yes, this year. six months, seven months? Yes. What were you going to tell me? Uh, I'm getting ready to get into all that. I'm just, okay. uh, I'm still just working on the background, trying to learn a little bit about you. Anytime there's a case where someone is missing, abused, or murdered, the spouse always starts out as the primary suspect. For those that are innocent, it is an additional emotional blow, but statistically, it is the best approach to solving the case. When was the last time you, your wife is missing currently? hasn't been seen for a day or two my wife is missing well here's here's what's going on okay so are you two having marriage problems or not at all okay not at all we just we have we have a great marriage um, so basically I woke up um, and I saw a woman at my door when was this tonight actually okay. um, there was a woman at my door um, and I was, I, I was, I was startled, who are you? And she explained to me.
to me um, that I'm Martine's friend. Um, she explained to me that, you know, you paid for the cell phone, you, you bought her the cell phone. Do you want her belongings or should I just, should I just throw it out or, you know, burn it? She gave me those options and I said, well, I want it. I mean... Now this is, it's like 7 o'clock Tuesday morning. About when was this? Um, 5 a.m. Okay. Or 5 a.m. Early, early this morning. Yes, sir. A couple hours ago. Okay, sir. And I've never met her before. Never seen her in a day of my life. Okay. I was I was really scared because, like I told the previous detective, that this is why I didn't want to give my address. Mm -hmm. For one, because I didn't want people knowing where I live, trying to kill me, kid kidnap me, you know, torture me, beat me up, whatever. You know, I didn't I didn't want to be. A, um, a victim of anything so I've got to ask you one thing have, have you ever been treated for mental illness mental illness right do you say I have mental illness no no I'm asking you if you've ever been treated for it I don't have mental illness okay, I didn't think so but again I, I don't know you so I just oh. have to ask it's so the woman shows up you don't know this woman describe her for me she's black um, her name's her she said her name was uh, I think Shawnee, I think. I think that's what she said. She's black. She has braids, a little short. Um, she just came to, she came inside my apartment. Older, younger? Younger. She About looked young. Like what age? She looked 19. Tall, um, skinny, short, fat? Short, skinny. Um, and I asked her, how did you come in? She said, I used her, her keys. I put it down in the... The, the kitchen. Now she knocked on the door or you opened the door? She walked herself in. Okay. Um, she walked herself in and she just explained to me, here, read the read the text message. Hold, hold on. The, the keys, she let herself in with whose keys? Martine's keys. And she had some kind of rag in her hand um, and she just threw her belongings towards me. Where are Martine's keys? In the kitchen. She in says, she says. In the kitchen in your apartment? She says, yes, that's okay. where she put it. Yes. What do her keys look like? Um, it's got a big M. And okay. It's, yeah. What did she do with her belongings? She just threw it at me. What, um, were, what were her belongings? Her cell phone, um, her clothes and she said she left the, um, the bag in the kitchen along with her keys now where's the cell phone now in the room in while I was sleeping in the bedroom Blanc's story is truly bizarre and it is no wonder it prompted questions about his mental health with the advances in forensics as well as technology, the days of being able to pull a mysterious stranger out of thin air are over. She showed you a text message? On whose phone was the text message? She told me, why don't you check the text message that she sent you? And I opened the text and I read it. Um, and it's basically Martine just saying she's had enough. I've just read quickly. And she she telling me she loves me. And she doesn't want me to um, go through anything like that, you know. And I I was just stunned. And I said, Where is she? And she said she's with my brother, and they're they're doing it right now. So this woman says that your wife is having sex. Was that what no, she no, was no, implying? No, not having sex. No. Do, like what's doing it? So. Basically, the text message I read was um, Martine basically saying that, um, basically, long story short, I don't remember exactly what was said in the text. Whose um, phone is it on? My phone. Where's your phone? I wasn't able to bring anything with me. I mean, did they use your phone in your they, house, or, yeah, or did you have it in your pocket? Like, uh, basically, basically, I... The officers, they stripped me of everything. But when they, did you have your phone on you? Did the officers take your phone or was it in the apartment? It was in the apartment. What kind of phone do you have? An iPhone. An iPhone. Uh, 
uh, what kind of case. Square. Square auto box. I love those auto boxes. Absolutely. You see this? Good dig. I drop mine three or four I'm times a day. I'm sorry, I'm just. What kind of phone does she have? There's a lot going on. I understand. Um, you know, it's it's white. The same thing, iPhone. It's white. Oh, um, a white wallet case. A white wallet? Oh, a wallet case. Yes, sir. So basically, basically, I read the text message. She was explaining, um, you know, her issues with her dad. Um, she couldn't take it anymore. Um, you know, basically, it was basically a lot of, like, animosity towards him mm -hmm. through the text message. And she, she basically was like, you know, I did it, you know. And did what? Like, she was responsible for her dad's death. Okay. Yeah. So, basically, she, she said she was helped, you know, a, an, an individual named Juan. Um, Juan. Yeah, Juan. Um, and she, she said she took something about taking care of him too. Um, you know, she, she she killed Juan too. She said, yeah. Had you known your wife to be violent before? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. But a lot of weird things have been happening lately. Wasn't your wife pregnant? Um, yeah. She's Who's, pregnant. Whose child was that? Was My it your child? child? Okay. Yeah, six months. She's still capable of. You know, still walking, moving, right. doing chores. The only thing she can't do is bend. Like so she let me just to make sure that I understand this right. Basically, this woman shows you a text. Or no, the woman tells you, check your text messages. Check my phone. Check your phone. You open up your phone and you have a text message. Is it showing that it's coming from your wife? Yes. So it's not somebody else pretending to be your wife. It's coming from your wife's phone. Yes. And it says. Does she say anything about killing her father? Yeah. Okay. She she said it. She when did the text? When did she send the text message? I was asleep. I didn't even realize that I even got a text message like that. She, you know, she she told me, you know, what why I I was confused. She said, why you don't why don't you check your phone to, to see you know what's going on? Well, let me ask you this before I before I get confused. When you opened up your phone, did it show up as a new text message? You know how you get that little thing saying you have a text message? Yeah. When was the last time that you looked at your phone last night? Like what time did you lay down or go to bed? Or well, that I don't remember. I mean, was that text message on there at 10 o'clock last night? I don't think so. 9 o'clock last night? I mean, have you checked your phone since 9 or 10 o'clock last night? Oh yeah, of course. And it didn't show up as a so, new text message. So basically, so basically, after the father was missing, mm -hmm. Martine's like whole demeanor has changed. She she basically doesn't want to be out. I I told her investigations wants to come see you. I texted her that because her phone isn't. Her, there's something wrong with her phone as far as calling. Mm -hmm. um, and I texted her. I said investigations need to see you because. You know, you s you not showing up, it makes you look really bad. And this was yesterday sometime? Okay. Let me ask you this. When was the last time that you had seen her father? The information about the text messages will be easy enough to confirm. So this was a poorly thought out lie. Blanc repeatedly uses the word basically, which is an indicator that he is lying. Okay. When was the last time that you saw your wife? Same day Saturday. You didn't see her Sunday? You didn't see her Monday? I saw her on Sunday. Okay. I saw her Sunday. I saw her, well, today. Today's Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Yeah. Did you so see her yesterday, Monday at all? Did I see her yesterday? Yeah, of course. Okay. I where, saw her yesterday. Where did you see her yesterday? At home. She's always home. Okay. Does she work? She she worked at Aetna, and she quit. Um, and I thought that was kind of strange because, you know, that, that was her highest paying job yet, as of yet, mm -hmm. um, and I actually helped her get that job, um, and she she said that she wasn't comfortable with being on the phone call, she works in a call center for Edna, um, and she didn't feel comfortable, uh, and she said she's just going to quit and find something else. She, 
She's the type of person that quits jobs and starts new ones. And How I long ago did she quit? About, I think, a week and a half. Okay. So you saw her sometime yesterday, morning, afternoon? Uh, yesterday, I saw her all day up until investigations told me to come by. What time was that? About? Oh, I have no idea. I don't remember. It was maybe... Before lunch, after lunch? I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm, I'm really not thinking straight right now. Yeah, I got um, it. Let me, let me, let me take some time to think. Because they called me. Mm -hmm. They called me, and I called them back, and I told them I would come right then and there. When you, when they called you, where were you? At home. And was your wife there with you when they called you? Yes. Okay, so they said they, um, they asked me is your wife able to come, and uh, I forgot I had to hang cuffs. Um, when, when, when they, s when they said, can you, are you able to bring your wife? And I said, of course, I'll bring her with me. Okay. And, um, Martine, I, after I hung up, I, I approached Martine about it and Martine said, no, I'm not going because I wasn't there. I'm not involved in that. I was, you know, I don't know why I have to go, you know, just. just so was this ready. yesterday morning, like around breakfast time, around lunch time when you went down to Hollywood? I have to I have to check my call log. Honestly, okay. I I'm not going to answer that because I really don't remember. Okay. Was um, it daytime? I think it was evening. Okay. I think it was evening. Well, that's not that long ago. Yeah. You mean towards like the end of the afternoon? Yeah. I think. I think seven, maybe seven or eight. Oh, okay. So that was later later in the evening. You, and is, did you see her, your wife again after that? No. What time did you come back to your apartment? So I, I called Mar. Well, I texted Martine. I said you need to come, and I came back home, and I didn't see her. Um, she said something about um, her being. Um, I think she said she's with her sister. What kind of car does your wife have? She doesn't drive. <coughs> she she said that she was picked up by her sister. Um, so that they can go to the movies together because, you know, she lives in Winter Haven. Now, you talk to her on the phone or? Text message. Okay, so you're texting back and forth. Yeah. All right. Um, so you get back to your apartment. She's not there. When you last saw her, when you left, so she and I just want to make sure I got this right. When you went down to talk to the detectives, and these are the Hollywood detectives, right? Yes. When you went down to talk to them, your wife was in the apartment. Yes. When I left, she was there. Okay. And that was sometime in the later afternoon, early evening. Yes. What was your wife wearing? Um, Just think for a minute. She she was she wasn't really wearing anything. She was just under the covers. So she was in bed. She was in bed under the covers. Um, Nightgown, T-shirt. Yeah, she was wearing a like a a, a a gown. What color? I believe it was blue, or the black one. It, it was the black one. I'm sorry, the black one. It was the black gown. Why was she in bed that time of that time of day? She's always in bed. She. Oh, that's right. She's six months pregnant. Yeah, she's okay. always sleeping, falling asleep. Blanc keeps changing his answers. First, he hasn't seen his wife since Saturday. Then, he saw her on Sunday. Less than a minute later, he claims that she was home on Monday. His lack of consistency is a definite red flag. How's your pregnancy going? She, she had a healthy baby boy. Um, we always, I always went to the doctor's appointment with her. Um, regular checkups, never missed an appointment with her. I was, you know, a very serious dad. I wanted to be involved and you know she was we had plans to name him after me we had all types of these plans we've even called um, um, Scrubber Life mm -hmm. uh, to, st to start a college fund and we were going to start saving you know even though he's not born yet it's, it's important to do that for kids right off the bat yeah and it's I never too early people would have said before he's even born you know and it makes sense because Martine actually had a miscarriage before, mm -hmm. um, and she she she's the type of person she's the type of person she doesn't like traditional 
practices. Um, she doesn't like the hospitals. She doesn't like giving birth through um, epidural. She wanted to give a water birth. She asked the doctor about that. She asked the doctor if she had to be at the hospital. She can be at home. She she doesn't like the traditional way of giving birth. If that makes sense. The uh, was she have a gonna have a boy or a girl? A boy. Wait, which one? The one. She. The one she was gonna have now. Yeah, boy. Okay. Well, have you all picked out a name already? After me. What was what was the name gonna be? The full name. Cassandra's Block Junior. Okay. Oh wait. Um, there's a middle name. I think it's Josiah. Okay. It's um Lear. Oh, she told me I I always forget. S something about what watching over God. Not not watching over God. Watching over your. I'm I'm not even going. I don't even remember. Okay. Yeah. The w is your is your wife Haitian also? Yes, absolutely. Where did y'all meet? Um, we actually met in school. Um, we met through school and we started talking and, and you know we just saw each other frequently and recently we not recently but at some point we started seriously talking and then we hung out um, I met her dad I met her mom I met her brother I met the entire you get along family. with the family absolutely absolutely I mean of course they're Haitian you know they 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 have they have um, they have their ways of, you know, education first. Um, you know, just if if you know anything about Haitian parents, you know, they are the typical Haitian parents. But, you know, I've never had an issue with mom, never had an issue with dad. They've never had an issue with me. The only issue they had was um how she moved out, um, without, you know, the blessing and whatnot. Um, and the same thing with the marriage. Um so, you know, they, they they still were upset about that, you know, how she did that and we didn't finish school, you know, mm -hmm. and what have you. Let me, I, I'm sorry, I just, I find it, a, it's an interesting story, but let's go back to, so you leave, you leave, she's in bed. Yes, sir. You go down and you talk to Hollandale or Hollywood? Hollywood. You do go down and talk to Hollywood people, Hollywood investigators. You finish up there about what time? Is it dark out when you finish up there? Yes, sir. Okay, where do you go then? Where did I go? Mm -hmm. I just took a drive around the city. I didn't. I didn't go straight home, to be very honest with you. Any idea what time you got home? Did you go anyplace else between driving and coming home? Did you go out for dinner? You go out for drinks? You go out for? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you come home about what time? <sighs> I believe it was. I have to I approximate. It doesn't. Uh, I, I have to check my I have to check my phone because I wasn't really paying attention to the time because you know the the way the way it ended I didn't I didn't really appreciate that so the way what ended you know the the conversation with the detectives oh with the uh, the Hollywood yeah, yeah you know, because story. you know I I came I showed up. I gave you my side of the story, mm -hmm. um, and they started to tell me how you know we didn't see a man, a Hispanic man, in front of the door, or a van, not a Hispanic man. Suspects frequently claim they went for a ride, and in most cases, it is just too convenient to be believable. Block is at least smart enough to say that he didn't stop anywhere, which could be disproved by security footage. I'm looking at them, how are you going to tell me if that's exactly what I saw in the background? A van. I'm not crazy at all. I mean, you can have a, <laughs> a physician test me. I mean, I'm I'm not mental at all. I know what I saw. Um, you know, I'm just, I was just very sensitive. Well, that, that. that's an issue that you yeah, yeah. have with them. But yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying to sort out yeah. the so last I was, th That's the reason why I was driving around the city. Um, plus, I felt I felt as though um, because after after they asked me for my address mm -hmm. um, and I declined that because I do have that right to decline it, um, they thought it was suspicious of me to just decline right. giving my address. I can understand why, and I gave them my reasoning as far as why not because I don't want anything to happen to me. Well, now obviously, you guys know you guys already know where I live. 
it's now going to be on a report. That's yeah. what I didn't want to. That's what I wanted to prevent. So that's why I declined. So I I felt as though I was being well, that, followed. Well, that's so separate. That's yeah. sep I mean, you felt you're being followed by by what? Hollywood police. Last so night. Yeah, absolutely. So it started off with me just calmly driving. Mm -hmm. You know, just driving to relax my mind, and then I just, I noticed two cars that were following me everywhere, like, just following me, like, I would, for example, I would be in the middle section, they would be in the middle section behind me, I would, I would uh, go on the turning lane, they would go there, and then last minute I would go this way, and then they would follow. And you think those were the police? Yes, it was a r regular vehicles. Regular Shit, it doesn't sound like they were very good at following you then if, if you figured it out. Because because when I looked at the tag, it was a regular Florida tag. Mm -hmm. and if, it, if it was not Hollywood police, then I feel like it was those people that, that were at my apartment. Well, we'll walk, let's, let's go back to that. The, so you get well, home some person. Right, person. you get home sometime after dark. Um, do you talk to anybody after you get home? You make any? No. Nope. Okay. You just, just chill out there. You have a what'd you say? You had a shot or something? Yeah, uh, I had a shot and I just went to bed. What was? What'd you drink? Um, it was. What's a, your drink a, of choice? A, a pint of um, the officer asked me the same thing. Mango. I forgot the name brand. The name name some name brands. Mango brandy or? Mm. It's mango's a flavor. Vodka? Not vodka. Rum? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't drink anything mango. I eat. I eat mangoes. But okay, so you have one one of those little bottles. Yeah, okay. I, had, I had a shot of that and I fell asleep. Well, no, not not one of those little bottles. I actually had a it, like a you know a pint like this size. Oh, okay. But I, it was up to here and I just took it and it relaxed my nerves okay. and just went to sleep. Oh, like schnapps, mango schnapps or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not sure what that would be. So you, you you crash. The next thing you know, does anything happen between when you crash and when you're woken I up was, by the woman? I was waiting for my wife to come home. I thought she was with her sister at the movies. Mm -hmm. um, and now, did she send you a text message saying she was at the movies? Yeah. Okay. She was. At, she got picked up by her sister to go to the movies, and. It wasn't true. But she, she she told you that. Yes, sir. And it came from her. Yes, sir. And about what time was that? Any idea? Eleven. Eleven p.m. Yes. Okay. Um, I think so. I think so. When was the, did you talk to her on the, Did you talk to her on the phone at all after you left yesterday, when you went down for your interview? I know you said you had several text messages with her. Did you ever speak with her after you left the apartment? Yesterday, right? Yeah, she was she was home. She, well, yesterday when it was the interview, um, after right? That's what I mean. You get in the car and you drive. Did you go to the Hollywood station? Yes, sir. You drive to the Hollywood station. I know between say yesterday evening, early evening, uh, and this morning sometime, you had text messages from your wife. Did you ever talk to her on the telephone? No. Did you all normally just communicate through text messages? Um, recently, we we had to. Are you um, not the last few weeks because something's been messed up with her phone, in particular. Okay. Um, I had the same issue for a little bit, but you know, I was I was able to actually call out. But she needed to get her phone fixed. I've been trying to get her to go to AT and T. You know, keep prolonging it, and that. That's an issue because you need, a, you need a phone to call. Blanc is showing quite a bit of paranoia. If he did, in fact, pass a mental evaluation, then this reaction stems from guilt. So, I came home, I saw the text message about her going to the movie theaters with her sister because, you know, they were hanging out. What movie were they going to? Any idea? Did she tell you? I, I didn't ask. I, I, we, because the reason I don't, I, the reason I didn't ask is because when she and I go to the movie theaters, we just choose whichever one is either in the area or has the movie that we're looking for playing. At so you don't have a particular theater. That yeah, you we to. we don't because we use AT and T. Thanks, um, it gives you a discount, and whatever movie we both 
side on, we first start off and we first start off with the one that's nearest us. See what time they're playing. If it doesn't fit, we go to the next nearest one, mm -hmm. so on and what have you. So we don't have a designated movie theater, uh, but to name you a few, AMC. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, she didn't tell you which one you were going. She right. was going to, and you don't know which one she went to, yeah. right? So I mean, I trusted her. I, well, it's her sister. I mean, I don't see why not. You but think I thought sh it was her sister. Do you think she's screwing around on you? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. So this woman shows up this morning somewhere around, what did you say, 4 o'clock? Yeah. And tell me again, she she knocked on the door and woke you up, or opened. she came in and woke you up? She opened the door. Did you wake up when you heard the door open, or did she wake you up? She woke me up. How? She does. Hey. She hey. came into your bedroom? Where were you sleeping? In the bedroom. You didn't hear her come into the so, apartment? Well, we just moved into the apartment. When I'm when I'm asleep, I don't really hear anything unless you're yelling at my ear. Okay. Um, we just moved in. We don't really have furniture. Um, we were actually planning to do that. Um, it's been two months. You know, we just have a blow up bed. Uh, we were actually going to get a bed. We actually um, were going to get the bed that I had. Uh, when I was living with my parents, it's a big old bed, mm -hmm. and we were going to bring that to the apartment. Um, we also bought a refrigerator. Um, that's why I had bought a hand truck to move the refrigerator and put that in. Um, so, you know, we just decided, forget it. You know, it just doesn't Where's the refrigerator? Fit. We sold it back. Okay. Yeah, we sold it back. Brought it back, and um, I had to bring it down the stairs. Um, so the woman tells me that, um, the, oh, another one of the belongings was the hand truck. Um, she carried all this in? No. She, she told me where it was located. She said it was located, um, underneath the leaves. Um, and... Under what leaves? Under the leaves. And she said there was blood on it. And I said, are you serious? And she said, yes, um, so you need to take care of that. And I said, okay, um, so I just... Under the leaves where? Um, under the leaves um, where, where the, the vehicles are parked. Okay. Yeah. Like, is there a pile of leaves there? Or? Yeah. So the woman comes in, she's inside your house, she gives you your wife's phone, mm -hmm. and what else does she give you? And she tells me where the, um, the hand truck is located. Okay. Um, so that's... When I was the last time you saw the hand truck? When what? Well, it was sitting in my apartment. When you went to the police interview yesterday? It was in my apartment. So... And when you came back last night, where was it? Well, she... She told me it was downstairs, and it had blood on it. And I never had blood on my hand truck. Um, so that's why I had took some cleaning gloves mm -hmm. because I didn't want to touch all of that. And I just took mm -hmm. a trash bag. I it smelled really bad, and I just took it. The and hand I truck smelled bad, and I threw it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, and who did this woman say she was again? Um, I just I just said it. I, I forgot the name. Nothing Blanc says makes sense. Even his reaction is flat and emotionless, which doesn't fit with some stranger entering his apartment with his wife's belongings. His lies are flimsy and his acting skills are poor, both of which make the detective's job easier. How did she know your wife? Uh, they're friends, she said. Okay, and what? She said, I'm her friend. And what did her brother have to do with it? Her brother wasn't in the apartment. She said her brother is taking care of the situation. Okay. About the text message. Taking care of, what did you take that to mean? So basically my wife, she, after she said that she was, you know, the responsible for her dad's passing, um, she, she, she said she didn't want to, um, something about not wanting to be in, in prison with a baby giving birth, losing a child, 
She said all this in a text message? And yeah, she, okay. she, she sent a really long paragraph. I was like, I had to scroll through. Is that still on your phone? Yes, sir. Now, how do you get into your phone? How do I get into it? Yeah, do you phone? have a passcode on the phone? Yes, sir. Are you going to give me that code? We need to get the message. Yes, I can give it to you. What's your what's your code? But I don't know her. I don't know her passcode. Her her passcode. It's we, as long as we can get it off your phone. Yeah. I mean that's what's important. So basically, my like my wife she texted me a, a huge paragraph right um, straight from her number because she does she does tell me how she gets random text messages. Not not text messages like a random text off of a random number, but this one was straight from her. Well, and only she knows the passcode on her, her phone. phone. Okay, so it had to be her. So you don't know her passcode? Code. Not at all. The so in the, in this message, and, and we'll we'll try to pull that up down the road here. She tells you that if I understand you right, basically she she admits to killing her father. She 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 talks How a lot. How did her father die? Her dad. Yeah. Sh she shot her. Him. Him. She okay. shot him. So she says that she shot her father, and and the man that helped him, Juan. She and says she shot Juan too. Something about some. I. She sent me. She sent me a text message, um, like towards me. Mm -hmm. It started off with "I love you, Cassandra," and then she sent me a paragraph for it. And then she also sent me what she sent her sister, um, she said, um, and I'm reading this and I know it's towards her sister because you see her sister's name comes up a lot, Joanne, right. Joanne, Joanne. Well, so I, I was reading it and a lot of what I was reading was like really bad hatred towards her dad. Okay, well, I mean, we can get, we can sort all that out later, but why is she telling you all this and then this other woman's bringing her stuff back to you? Like, what was she, the in, in the text message, she said that um, she wanted to kill herself, mm -hmm. um, and after she, she died, she wanted to be burnt, like, into fire. Did she say how she was going to kill herself? A gun using the wom the the woman's brother's gun. What kind of does she have a gun? Does she have a gun? Right. Not her, but sounds the w the way the te well actually I don't know actually she may very well have a gun but based on the text message it sounds like she doesn't because mm -hmm. Martine is asking her for her brother's gun if that okay. makes sense. So if I understand this right and correct me if I'm wrong she's saying that. And, and it's all written down somewhere so she's saying that she shot her father and then she shot the other guy too yes so that's two of them mm -hmm. and you don't know and you think it was the other guy's gun that she used perhaps have it's you ever good. seen her with a gun before no. do you have a gun no okay and speaking of um, so basically another thing she another thing she gave me like threw at me was the gun mm -hmm. Um, it came in a, 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 a box with a bag, um, and I looked, she, she, before I opened it, she said, you're probably gonna, you're probably really gonna need this, and I said, need what, and then I opened it, I, I saw the gun. Holy shit, tell me what the gun looked like. It's, it's literally, it's, it's literally the gun, it, it's, it's, it's got like, um, like a, a cylinder type thing. Blanc is able to casually say that his wife murdered her father and now wants to kill herself and their unborn child, and he doesn't even bat an eye. There's no concern for his wife and child, and he acts as if the situation is perfectly normal. He may mistakenly believe that remaining calm makes him look innocent, but in this case, it just increases the already high level of suspicion. Okay, so do you know the difference between a revolver that's what it is. And a semi-automatic. Revolver. Semi-automatic has... I know what it is. I know what it is. It's a revolver. Where you pull the... Absolutely. And a revolver's got the wheel that folds out? Absolutely. Okay. So black, black or silver? Chrome. I think it was... 
stainless, gray, black? I think it was black. Okay. I think. Big black or silver? Big, no, little, small. And I'm looking at it like, holy shit, like, I've never, because I've, I've never touched a gun before. I've, mm -hmm. I've never... I've never had a gun, I've never purchased one, never had one, so I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm like, holy shit, and then it's got the, the, the box of ammunition. Right. Locke makes another outrageous claim in three, two, one. And I'm looking at it and... It's I'm got like, all of it, the gun and the ammunition? She said, you're probably going to need this. Okay. You're probably going to really need this. Why would you need it? Because... I don't know, she, she feels as though maybe people are going to come look at And she handed her. this to you? Yeah, she just said, you're probably going to need this. Where's that now? It's it's in the apartment, um, in my bedroom. Blanc says the strange woman gave him the gun. Okay. I've, I mean, I I made the mistake touching it, but I right. never, obviously... Well, I, I mean, she handed it to you, so... I never used it, and... Where in your bedroom? Either, either it's on the bed or on the floor because I immediately put it away. Okay. Um, so I... is. Let me ask you this. Is there anything else in that apartment that this woman brought in that belonged to your wife? Is your wife's phone in there? Yes. Where's the phone? In the bedroom because she threw it at me. Remember? That's the one in the white wallet? Yeah. Your wife's keys are in the kitchen. That's the one with the M on it? Yes. Anything else that she gave you that belonged to your wife? Clothes and... And where are they? In the room. In the bedroom or in the... In the bedroom, yes sir. Okay, and what are they? Are they folded up? Are they in a box? Are they in a... Just munched up. It wasn't even folded. It's like this and just... Anything else that she... Did she bring you anything in a box? Did she bring you anything in a bag? Did she bring you anything in a sack? Yeah. The, the gun I told you and right. the ammunition, like it's got a whole case of ammunition. Like but I mean, how did she bring that in? That's what I'm asking. What was it? Was it all, was she in just bag, carrying it? In the bag, yeah. And well, she had a rag. She had a rag that she was holding and she just, she was just holding it. What kind of bag? Um, it was like a church type bag. It church. Has yeah, it was like brown with uh, most of it is brown and it had like a purple logo on it. You mean like a woman's purse? Mm -mm. A church bag. It's I don't know what a church bag is. Basically, you if 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 you've ever been to church, they give you like little goodie bags. Mm -hmm. And where's that bag? It's in the apartment with the uh, with the box. With what box? The box with the revolver and the ammunition. Oh, so that's in the. Yeah. And, and the other crap was in there it, too. It, it, I don't think it's there anymore because I was touching it. Okay. Um, please don't take it the wrong way. I, I really never used it. Neither one of them. Uh, no, I understand that, but I'm just trying to find out. I we're gonna need to grab that stuff. Do we have your permission to go in and get the gun and her personal stuff? No. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Yes, okay. of course. And you think that bag is still in the apartment? In the where in the apartment? In the in the, um, the master bedroom. Okay. Anything else that they this woman brought in that you can think of? Not that I can think of off the top of my head, no sir. Supposedly, this woman dropped off several of his wife's belongings, including her phone, which is hard to believe she would allow someone to take, but also a gun that belongs to another man. None of this adds up. And the more Blanc speaks, the harder it is to believe anything he says. You want? You need anything else? Um, maybe another another little bag of chips. Yes, you want? What do you want? You want? Uh, I think you got a choice. We got chips or we got cookies. I'll take the cookies. Okay. Yes, All right. Hold on a minute. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, filling in the blanks here for me. Of course. Does, does your wife have a brother? A brother? 
Yeah. Down here, if it lives down here. In Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. I mean, she may very well have. Because. That you know of. That I know of, no. Because. To my understanding, she has a total of three brothers. Um, the oldest one, um, Ryan, he lives in Sunrise. Mm -hmm. um, the second oldest lives with mom um, in Hollywood. And uh, the youngest one, the youngest boy, no one knows where he is at all. No one knows where he resides. No one knows his phone number. It's like he's vanished. Right from the earth, yeah. Why'd you ask? Uh, there was just a, there was a phone call that, that came in, and uh, they were trying to figure out whether it was one of your wife's brothers. Uh, where do you think your wife is now? Where do I think she is? Right. I don't know. That's <coughs> that's why I was walking around to see you because after everything was done with, I was walking around to see you know where they where she could have been. Like what um, do you mean? Like in the area. I was walking, um, and then I just like I walking in what area? I'm, you're losing me there. The um, like let's say I live here. I was walking here. When was that? This morning. I was honestly just looking for her. Um, and I, s I said, you know what, I'll just, when I'm, when I'm done putting everything up, as far as the, the ladder, like throwing it away. What, were you throwing away the ladder? The, the truck. It's full of blood. Yeah, she told me where it's located. And, and where was that next... Was it upstairs or downstairs where she told you it was? You downstairs. said it was under the leaves? Downstairs, yes, sir. When, so you go down those back stairs, where was it from there? In the leaves. Like, but where are the leaves? I remember I told you where the car is parked? Mm -hmm. Where your car is parked? Mm -hmm. Well, behind it. Which, which car is yours? White Challenger. Okay, behind it in that alleyway? Yes, sir. It was just sitting there, laying there? Yeah, it was covered. She said it's covered over there underneath those leaves. Now, why is she bringing this stuff back to you? Well, and she, she advised me that basically she wanted me to see if I wanted to just get those, her belongings to be just thrown out, like if she, if she she and her brother were going to take care of it, mm -hmm. or if I wanted to take care of it, and I chose I wanted to keep the phone. I thought I thought your wife had already killed the uh, her brother. Killed. Your wife told you that she had killed her father, and the guy that helped her, she had killed him too. Mm -hmm. That wasn't this woman's brother. No. Okay, a different Juan, person. Uh, basically, Juan is supposedly the guy's name that helped her kill her dad, okay. supposedly. You'll notice that when Blanc is asked a question that he finds uncomfortable, he'll repeat it back to the detective to buy himself a few more moments to make up an answer. Rather than making up poorly thought out stories out of thin air, he would do better to exercise his right to remain silent. Um, and, and how do you know Juan? I, I don't know Juan at, at all. I don't, I don't even know him. Um, and then the brothers, she didn't, as far as I know, she didn't kill because she wanted to kill herself based on the message. She didn't want to, like I said. Well, did virgin. this woman say that your wife was already dead? This one that she came said, she said, my brother is taking care of it. And so I her brother was going to kill your, your brother, your wife killed her father and Juan. So it sounds like it sounds like my wife killed herself, or she's the type of person that she. How can I say it? She um, she doubts herself a lot. She doubts. She's she's easily scared. Um, so a lot of times she, she. But she would have killed herself in a five or six hour period because she was alive at seven o'clock 
when you went to six o'clock when you went to Hollywood. She was alive when you got the text message at nine o'clock after the interview. I told her you need to go see investigations right now because they're wanting to speak to you today, tonight. It's very serious. It's your dad. Your dad. And you is think there. that's why she killed herself? I think so. She 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 actually she uh, admitted it in the message. She okay. she didn't want to, to go through the consequences. Cassandra, let me, I just want to make sure that I've got this right because I don't want to take notes and be completely off on this. You go down and you talk to the Hollywood guys. They're getting a little confrontational with you. It kind of throws you off. You leave. Somebody's following you. You go back to your place. Two people, two cars. Two cars. Me. Some, a couple people are following you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you go back to your place. You do a shot. You crash. You don't. You're not that concerned about your wife because you get a text message from her saying that she she was there when you left at about 7 p.m. Monday. About 6 p.m. Monday or whatever it was. I wasn't concerned because I left. And she sent you a she text was, message I saying that she was there. Um, and when I said I'm coming to pick you up, she was like, "I'm at the jo Joanne picked me up to go to the movie theater." And this was sometime around after when, when I said you need to go to see investigators. Okay, this was after you'd already talked to the investigators. Right. Eight after or nine o'clock. After I texted her to say I'm coming to pick you up, so that we can go together for to you to speak to investigation. Okay, th so 8 or 9 o'clock last night. night. And it's like something like that. And okay. It's, and it's like, and it's like she... Well, bear with me for a minute. We'll come back to that. So that's the last time that you actually hear from her, correct? Well, that you're actively texting back and forth. You go back somewhere around midnight before, or after, have a shot, and crash. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, it's somewhere around 4 o'clock, and there's a woman in your bedroom that you don't know who she is. She's waking you up. She tells you to check your phone. I, am, I, am I right so far? Because I don't want to yes. be putting... I just want to make sure that what I've got is... Yes. She tells you to check your phone. You've got a message on there mm -hmm. from your wife mm -hmm. that says, condensed version... I killed my father. I killed this other guy. Basically, her admitting what she did. Her saying she's scared to go through uh, consequences, and then her saying she's just gonna kill herself. Okay, so um, she admits with, she with, with the woman's brother's gun. Did she say that in the text message? Yes. So she tells you, "I killed my father. I killed the other guy." And I, I'm not going to turn myself in. I'm going to kill myself with my friend's brother's gun. I think that I think I think that's why she wasn't right to answer your question. Yes, I think that's why she didn't want to confront investigations. That's why she didn't want to show up since the f the, f the moment the moment we found out Dad was missing. Mm -hmm. That's why she didn't want to. Sh I feel like that's why she didn't want to show so up. So this woman's basically coming in saying. Telling you that your wife's dead, or or pay attention, your wife's dead, and here's a gun that she used to kill herself. No, she said she said she said that my brother's taking care of it. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to need this. So, so that's not the gun that that your wife killed her father with. Even if Blanc's story had been true up to this point, there is no way this other man would hand over a gun used in a murder and suicide that could be traced back to him. This story was bad enough in bits and pieces, but when it is told all together, it is hard to see it as anything other than a string of lies. I believe it is because she just handed it to me, and it seems as though that is her brother's gun because based on the text message, her brother is the one that's using the gun so that she can kill herself. So it may very well be she either doesn't have one or has one. I honestly don't know these people. So, do you but think that's the same gun she used to kill herself? I mean, the way she said my brother's taking care of it, it's it sounds to me like maybe he was either helping her with the process or cleaning up the, the aftermath or whatever. Okay. 
But was your understanding was that that gun killed both her father and her? Yes. Okay. Did she tell you where she shot her father? No. Okay. So this woman comes in, she she gives you the gun, she gives you her personal possessions, her whatever she had, the small stuff. The hand truck though, how did this woman get the hand truck? How did she get the hand truck? Right. It was basically they must have taken it out because it was in the apartment. They must have taken it out and because it was in the apartment the entire time. Yeah. I don't understand how it would have went from here to to there. The only way is if either she moved it or where in the apartment was it? Where in the For apartment? For the past couple days. That where the air conditioner would be. Was that living room, bedroom? Living room, yeah, where the um, in inside, like you. Is it one of those big hand trucks, like five feet tall type thing? It's it's one of those hand trucks that you can move the refrigerator. So a heavy duty one, not yes. a small one. Heavy duty. Was that there when you went down to the police department yesterday? No, I didn't really pay attention to that. Did honestly. you see it yesterday? I didn't. Need when was the last time you saw it? I didn't need to use it ever since I used the refrigerator. To when move the refrigerator. When did you move the refrigerator? I would say two, three weeks ago. But that's or it's fairly big and it's in your living room. You had to see it. There's not much in no, your living no, room. No, no, no. In in the actual air conditioner. Like there's a door and you put it inside. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and then you close it up. Like a little closet in there where the air conditioner water heater sits. That type of thing. Honestly honestly I think she must have already had it. Or maybe took it before she left. Your I wife? Whoever. I don't. I, I. I. have no idea. I just. I just know I used it to move the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. Now that the detective has heard Blanc's story, he is moving into a different phase of questioning. Instead of asking questions, he is going to be presenting facts or bluffs disguised as facts to punch holes in Blanc's version of events. I want to make sure that you understand me because I appreciate you talking to me. I appreciate you listening to, I, I've talked to you, I've asked, asked you some questions, some of them you've answered honestly, some of them I don't think you have, um, but but at least... Which one do you think Well, I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you. Uh, at least you're speaking to me. Um, obviously you've got to know you're in some pretty serious trouble now. I mean, you're the police department, they, they grabbed a hold of you, they put you in handcuffs, they put you in the back of the car, they got you sitting here handcuffed to a table, uh, and, and you haven't even asked me why. And I understand, he, things throw people off. And I, they already, I already asked them why, they told me because of suspicious activities, okay. because I was walking well, with my hoodie. Let, let me, I thought that and I, I, think you deserve, I think you deserve me being straight with you. I told you when I came in here, that um, I, I wouldn't play games to you, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to do that type of thing. So I, I just, I want to give you the chance to clear things up. The, the police were following you yesterday after you left, but you already kind of knew that. W when you went to Walmart, what did you buy at Walmart? When I went, what did I buy? Right. I didn't buy anything. Well, you came out with a bag. I mean, they're going to know, they're going to find a bag and the receipt and they'll go back to the store. Oh, so gloves, yeah. Gloves. The rubber gloves. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't No, that, that's all right. And again, Cassandra... I'm sorry, I, I didn't remember. That's fine. I like you personally. I, uh, I find you interesting to talk to. But within the next few minutes or two, you're going to have to make that decision. Either you're going to be straight with me and you're going to give me some reasons and you're going to get this off your chest and you're going to start working in that direction. Not only were they following you in the car, but there was more than two. There were several more. They followed you to the store. They saw you, what you bought. And when you went back to your apartment and you parked the car down at the end, they sat there and they waited. They waited and they watched. And they watched. And they watched. And they saw you come out. And they saw this, that you go down and get the dumpster. They saw you come back. They saw you go down and put the, the cart in the other dumpster. 
There wasn't a woman. Just get it off your chest. Tell me what happened. I mean, just let it go. I mean, they. I understand how shit happens, and I understand things just go sideways, but it, it sounds to me like you just made some really bad choices and found yourself in a really bad spot. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but just give me, I mean, tell me what really happened. Like, why? What do you mean it doesn't mean it's the end of the world? <sighs> you know what happened. I just, I need to know why. I mean, was, did she come at you? Did, was it an argument? Was it a... What do you mean it's not the end of the I world? Mean, <coughs> I mean, you're not dead. Although, I can look at you right now and I can see that you're sorry for what happened. I can see remorse. I can see somebody who's a grown man who's a little concerned who's uh, fearful about what's going to happen next. I've never been in your position, um, but I can tell you from doing this job for many, many years, the only thing that's going to give you some peace and the only thing that's going to at least start to get you at least you got to be truthful. You got to be honest. From this point forward, you just got to tell me what happened. You know they were watching you, but you already knew that. You knew that they just didn't happen to stumble upon you. The guys were sitting in the alley for four or five hours. Uh, that's why they called the patrol units to come down and, and grab hold of you. Um, they've already pulled her out of the out of the dumpster. Uh, out of the one small one, they pulled the hand cart out of the other. They're doing search warrants to go into the house. You didn't mean for this to happen. I can look at you and tell. I can sit here with you right now and know that you didn't mean for any of this to happen. That something happened that just kind of pushed this out of control. Uh, that something just started spinning around. But that's what I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me your side. I told you I wasn't going to play games with you. I wasn't going to. I want to be able to go back to the prosecutor and I want to tell him, yeah, he, he fucked up, but he's remorseful. I mean, you didn't mean for this to happen, right? There's no way that this was, you didn't plan this out. I mean, I say that, but so... Despite the detective saying that he knows Blanc is remorseful, that is hardly the case. Blanc hasn't shown one shred of emotion for his wife or child, and his only interest is seeing what kind of deal he can get if he confesses. When, 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 when you say that about someone, what, what typically happens with the person? You know, a lot of it depends. A, a lot of it depends because every case is different. I've been in this unit. I'm just wondering. I've point. been in this unit for 19 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't, and again, I'm not going to be one of these guys that's going to sit here and say, look, you tell me the truth, and, and I'll take care of it, and I'll make it go away, because I can't do that. Um, I can tell the state that you were cooperative, that when confronted, uh, you came forward, and you said what happened. Um, I mean, look at you, you're not a fucking killer. You're not a killer. I can sit, you're eating fucking cookies. But something, something tripped, something flipped, and I, and I want to know what it was. I mean, I want to know, I want to be able to go forward and say, yes, he was cooperative. Yes, when confronted, he, uh, uh, he, he explained it to me. I mean, he said what happened, just like what happened. Get it off, I guarantee you, you're going to feel better. I can tell you from doing this for 19 years, just let it go. Otherwise, it's going to eat at you and eat at you and eat at you and eat at you. I know that you did not want to kill your wife. I know you didn't. I know that you didn't. But something, something tripped. Um, I mean, obviously, she's been dead more than five or six hours. What happened? Just need some some time to eat my cookies. So okay. hungry. 
No, that's fine. That's fine. Again, I. Uh, that's all this has come down to now. I mean, this is just your side. I've got, I've got all the other stuff. We've collected the stuff. You know how phones work. The, um, the phone tracking system. Like, if I send you, if I'm sitting here, and I send you a text message, it's going to show up on your phone. When I go back and pull those reports with it, now not the regular phone report, but when I pull the report with a court order, it's going to tell me not only where my phone was when that text message was sent, but where your phone was when it was received. And it's going to tell me that within several yards. It's going to give me pretty specific geo locations, geo areas. We know that's going to what's going to happen with the if the text message is still on your phone or her phone. We know that the phone was going to be with you. They've been tracking your phone, and they've been tracking her phone. I mean, it's it, it's just about this is the one chance that you really have. Why do you say I killed my wife? Because she's dead? Because you put her in the dumpster? And you know you did. And then this is what we could we could sit and play and you're entitled to, to continue to play play this out. If I'm listen to playing. no, you hear I'm me out. Playing. Hear me out. Yeah. If if but you're entitled to that. You're entitled to play this out. But it, it's time for you to be straight and it's time for you to come forward and say what happened. Same thing. I mean it's just it's time. It's um you made a terrible mistake, whether she pushed you into it, whether she cornered you, whether she verbally, physically, whatever, but you made a bad mistake, and there's no real correct in that mistake, but there is a getting right with it. Um, and you know, you could do the same thing that some people do. You could say, look, I, I, do, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. That's not going to give you peace in here. It's not going to give you the peace. You just got to be straight and tell me what happened. Like why? I know it was some. I know it was something that just. You seem like a pretty calm guy. Something just pushed you over the edge, like beyond over the edge. And I think I know, but I, I, I don't. I don't want to hear it. I don't want you to hear it from me. I want to hear it from you. She told you she knew, didn't she? She told me she knew what. Well, see, that's I. I don't want to put the words in your mouth. I want you. What do you mean? She. She told me she knew. I think she told you she knew something. And she threatened you or cornered you with it. And then things went bad from there. My wife. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not playing games. I really don't know what you're talking. Okay. Well, then maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me what happened. Just be straight with me. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So, with people, you know, with people, I'm not saying that it applies to me, but, you know, with people. Hypothetically. That, yeah. People that, you know, are in, in situations where they've, you know, murdered or whatnot, um, is there a possibility of, like, you know, they, they can get out? What, what are those circumstances? And, and make sure, listen to me clearly, because I want to make sure that you understand this. Blanc is contemplating the possibility of confessing, but he wants to look at every angle first to see if he will be able to get off with no consequences. However, the manner in which he disposed of the body is going to make it very difficult for him to get a reduced sentence. There is always a possibility. You understand that I have absolutely nothing to do with that at this point. I can tell you that cooperation and that honesty go a long ways towards that. I can tell you that depending on, let's say hypothetically, that I had somebody in here this morning, not you, and I talked to them and they found themselves in a bad position and something happened and they fucked up and they killed their wife. 
and they tell me I've got nothing to say and we go ahead and we charge them and we go ahead and we collect the evidence and we prove the phones we prove the cleanup in the house the blood we prove this we prove that and it goes to trial there's no remorse there was no honesty there was no remorse um, jury does whatever they do and they find they, they convict the person on the other hand you the crocodile tears start in three two one just let it go. What happened? Cassandra, what happened? How come? Locke fakes tears in hopes of a lighter sentence. <coughs> Where did it happen? <coughs> My life is done. Where did it happen? <coughs> was it in the apartment? <coughs> is being sexually assaulted in prison. If he was hoping to make himself look sympathetic, he just blew it. Don't even think about that. Let's think about getting this stuff right. Where did it happen? Cassandra, let's work through this. Let's get it out. No spin, just just straight up. When I walk out of here today and when I'm typing this up, I want to be able to say that although there was some initial there was some initial confusion and there was some initial misinformation that when confronted, you did the right thing, you said what happened, and we went forward from there. Even though I can guarantee you absolutely nothing, and I'm not the one to make any bargains or deals with, I can tell you that if you're honest with me, I'll go to the prosecutor and I'll make sure that they know that, just like I've done that hundreds of times in the past.
are in the car. Just give me a moment, please. Okay. But I only want the truth. At this point, I'd rather, I, I, I don't want you to be dishonest with me. Blanc is having the ship rolls from a man who is completely innocent in his wife's death to a man who killed his wife but didn't mean to. He doesn't handle shifting gears well, and to buy time, he continues to fake cry and to take sips of his Coke. But I'm going to sit right here with you. Are you going to be straight with me? See, but this, Cassandra, this is you're getting ready to make the mistake that other people have made. The problem with you taking a moment is you're in that preservation mode and you're trying to figure out how to put the best spin on it. And what happens is, is when you do that, you don't come off sincere, you don't come off honest. And that's all I want. I want the honest truth. I want the straight truth of what happened. I don't want you to try to, to make things fit together. I don't want you to try to give me a story about some woman coming into your bedroom at 4 o'clock this morning. I just want you to be honest with me. And if you think too hard, you're going to talk yourself into telling another lie. And that's not where we're at now. You just got to tell me how this past week spiraled out of control. I can look at you and tell that you want to. What's the most serious thing you've been in trouble for? Tickets. How old are you? Only 22. What happened? I'm, I'm sorry, work the apartment or work the car? At least give me that. I'll tell you the truth. That's all I want from you. That's all I wanted from you since we got here. Obviously, you know that... I, I think you even knew the guys were watching you in the alley. You were just hoping they didn't see everything. Did you think they were out there? Tell me what happened. I just tell me you the one in the alley. No. But you were looking in the one truck. What? You were shining the flashlight in the one truck or something. What happened? Take a deep breath and just let it go. The apartment or the car? I, I understand that you had... Oh, I see. Okay. Sure you don't want anything else? I guess some more cookies and a drink. Okay. Are these done? Are these still got some the detective has gotten most of the information he needed, and they have moved on to taking DNA samples from Block, as well as his mugshot. The um, the forensics woman is here. She's going to snap your photograph. She's going to do DNA swabs on the inside of your mouth. She's going to swab your fingers. She's going to give you a blue, like, plastic suit to put on going to have to take off all those clothes and put them in a paper bag um, and then we'll go forward from that and, and this drip try not to get dripped on it's very annoying oh, okay.
Bernard Blanc was charged with two counts of premeditated murder. He is awaiting trial and is being held without bond. That'll do it for today. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below where you can do just that. Thank you for watching and stay safe.